what's going on guys make sure you stay all the way to the end of the video to see all the progress that we've made so far okay, so scrolling through uh, Facebook marketplace this is the uh, the closest one I can find to our build um, it's a 93 mx5 so the price is three grand so that's the uh, that's the goal for this build. It's gonna be under three grand. Um, and this one here is an automatic. So this whole thing is gonna be, uh, the whole goal is to have an LS swap Miata for under three grand. All right, so what our plan of attack is, there's a few things that have to go down for us to make this happen. Uh, first thing is we gotta fit the engine in the bay, fit the transmission, fabricate the motor mounts, fabricate trans mounts, uh, wiring the computer, cooling system, exhaust, uh, slave for the clutch. Also, I didn't mention um, in this, there's like a couple other things, but we don't have enough space on the board to add it in there. Um, and then over here, we have some of the parts. So we also have to figure out what we're gonna do for the differential. Um, we haven't figured that out yet, but we'll see. We don't know if we're gonna keep the Miata diff for now and then uh, expand out to the 8.84 later on. Uh, we haven't planned for that yet, but right now our main goal is to get the engine fit Get the transmission fit, uh, finish all the fabrication work as far as the subframe, uh, the subframe, the transmission mount, and everything. Uh, and here's some parts that we actually need to um, purchase. The uh, oil pan, it's gonna need an aftermarket oil pan to be able to clear the subframe, flywheel clutch kit, exhaust manifolds, and uh, flywheel bolts. And there is a list of a couple other little odds and ends, but as we go into it, we'll start getting more parts in. And uh, we have all the receipts so far of everything that's been purchased. So let's go over those. All right, so far all the money spent is right here on this board, you can see. Um, so the engine, transmission, wire harness, and ECU, the computer, uh, all this stuff we ended up getting half off. And then here's what we paid for with the course. This is if anybody went into the junkyard and purchased these items, you would have to pay the core price. So we added the core in there. So uh, the total with the core and taxes, comes out to 386 that's for the the computer the wire harness transmission and engine so here's a couple other things we've had to purchase to make this happen uh, also we will be adding a couple more things so this is the total so far so there was metal that we had to purchase for the jig uh, that was $85 that's also for the subframe so the subframe steel so it it, uh, it was square tubing and a couple pieces of sheet metal stuff some scraps it was $85.40 at metal supermarkets Intake manifold off eBay. This is everything we got off eBay. Intake manifold 208. Exhaust manifolds used uh, off of a G8. $109 clutch kit. Uh, brand new. 127 flywheel. $85. All of the total on eBay was $529. Uh, this also is eBay. So the the flywheel bolts, oil pan, trans bolts were at Ace Hardware. Uh, trans tunnel metal was at Metal Supermarket. So. Uh, all this stuff here comes out to $203. This stuff, eBay stuff, $529. Uh, metal supermarkets, $85, $386. The total for so far is $1,204.23. Alright guys, so we're actually going to have to go ahead and make the jig for this Miata subframe for the LSV8. Uh, swap for the Miata. So I'm going to go ahead and start recording the videos for this. All right, so here's the uh, metal that we went ahead and picked up. So we had metal supermarkets cut this to two and a half feet. Um, there's four pieces that's going to make the uh, base frame for the jig. So let's go ahead and get into this. So I got this tubing that these control arm bolts fit through. So what we're going to do to make the jig for the location for the control arms, we're going to go ahead and cut a piece of a tube that's wide enough to fit in between the control arm mount and in this case I already have the control arm bolt in there and we're gonna go ahead and pop it in there with a the hammer make sure it's nice and snug so it it holds the location good and then uh, put the bolt through like I have done over here and over here alright guys so far I've got all four of the lower control arm mounts created the upper control arm brackets that we need to weld to Little brackets just reference points um, so we're gonna go ahead and start cutting some metal the height of this to create these refer reference points but we'll probably start with these bottom control arm ones first 
All right, so in this stage, I got the four control arm mount, bottom mounts fully mounted. They're welded in there. Went ahead and drilled. I just drilled the hole through this, the same size as the dowel pin that I was cutting this piping, and cut it in the middle and just used that to um, mount these control arm mounts. All right, as usual, I suck at recording, so here's a picture of the finished product this is the jig here this next picture is going to be the subframe fully welded out um it's not fully welded out in this stage but um there's just a couple more things to do it's almost complete here um in the next picture coming up here you're going to see it in the car that's what it looks like and then after that we actually went ahead and test fitted the engine in the engine bay with the new intake manifold so after that we'll carry on with the video Alright, as you guys can see, we got our clearance between our exhaust manifold and our steering shaft. So, um, um, as you can see, we have some aftermarket motor mounts that I purchased uh, that are going to work great for this application. It's kind of a universal set. Um, I ended up cutting the mount off of this side because we have to fish so many things through here. So, we've got our um, rack and pinion, steering shaft, and uh, exhaust manifold that's going through here. So, what we're going to end up having to do here is we're going to end up snaking the motor mount up higher and coming kind of looping over to here like that so let's start working on that all right boys so i got this first bracket cut so this is kind of where the um motor mount's gonna sit and you get a good camera position there kind of like that so everything clears um then we're gonna build one for the back to um go ahead and support this so we're going to end up having to cut a little circle section right here and uh, weld it onto here. We'll cut this off and weld it onto there like that. So now we got the mount mocked up in there. It clears the power steering and the exhaust manifold. Come through here and take a look at that. All right, here's the final product. Let's do a little walk around all the way around it so you guys can kind of see the clearancing that we did here. It was definitely fun clearancing everything um, that was sharing space, but um, as you can see, we're able to make it happen. So you got your exhaust manifold and your steering shaft coming down. You got about a quarter inch of clearance between the steering shaft and everything kind of just fits in there. Uh, let me see if I can get a better angle here so you guys can see. This mount back here is notched to be able to accommodate the power steering and the rack and pinion and steering shaft, everything that goes through there. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more progress. In the next video, we're going to be building that transmission mount and getting everything set up. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. See you guys later.